she'll be a good coaching matchup. Jayhawks are in the home whites tonight. Bison in the yellow uniforms. There's Norm Roberts, interim head coach, filling in while Bill Self is out for the first four games of the year. KU wins the tap. Great to have you with us tonight. Dewan Harris handles it for the Jayhawks. KU starters tonight, same as the first game of the season. Harris, McCuller, Wilson, Dick, and Adams at the five. This is Adams with Morgan out to check it. Yeah, this game's really going to be about tempo, tempo, tempo. The Jayhawks going with that smaller starting lineup with K.J. Adams going against the big 6'10", 6'11". It'll be a great test. And how does North Dakota State match up? Well, they put Grant Nelson on Jalen Wilson, and he forced him into a very tough shot. Yeah, you know, Jalen Wilson, uh, people forget about it. Even though he seemingly looks like a guard, he's playing the forward spot and even led the Jayhawks in rebounding last year. And so he's, he's no foreigner to the paint in what it takes to be successful down there. First possession for the Bison, near turnover as Bowden Scumberg almost had it poked away. Lance Waddles, Luke Yoder, Grant Nelson, Andrew Morgan, their starting five. This is Waddles inside, unable to finish. And Grady Dick throws it away for Kansas. Kansas did a great job against Omaha, not allowing them to catch where they want. Hard ball pressure and denials all the way up to the three. Grady Dick, Dick first early three. By Grady Dick. Continuing the momentum that he had against Omaha. Steal by KU. Numbers. Dick gives it up this time. Wilson a three. Well, your big key in this one was tempo. That means North Dakota State needs to convert when they have half court opportunities. Ball on the three from Wilson trying to push it. Gonna be so ball out. Attack. And is a, a very capable ball handler on the dribble drive, also trying to create for himself. Now we say 6'11, 6'10 for their two big guys, but they're both very agile and mobile. Yeah, you know, they really are not afraid to step out on the wing as we're seeing here, but I really like this matchup. Jalen Wilson, Garden Nelson on the perimeter, forcing him to give it up. Nelson, though, with the offensive rebound, backs it up. Short on the three. Over two minutes in, still just three nothing. Dick has hit one already. Not that time. McCuller keeps it alive and then falling out of bounds. Had to throw it away. Couldn't find a teammate. Yeah, great effort on the glass there by Kevin McCuller. And three lengthy shots there early in the game here by the Jayhawks. Probably the Dugans is going to try to attack the back for the next one or two possessions to get a layup or get fouled to the free throw line. McCuller comes up with a steal. Harris, Dick wants a lot. Wilson trailing instead. Will shoot two. Yeah, that's kind of something that the Bison really try to do methodically isolate their big guys. We see the double team coming in there from Dewan Harris, the savvy all-conference defensive player doing what he does best, digging that ball out, getting the steal, and trying to turn that steal into easy transition points. Wilson coming off a nice game in the opener. I'm sure that won't be the last time tonight that we see that big man isolation by the Bison and certainly won't be the last time we see a double team by the Jayhawks. Knocks in both free throws. Wilson 19 points, 11 boards for a double-double Monday against Omaha and a new career high, seven assists. Full court pressure from the Jayhawks. Bison handle it. Gunberg, who was basically their sixth man a year ago, much bigger role this season. Now Waddles, the freshman from Shreveport, buries the three. Waddles is a catch and shoot guy. You have to be there immediately, right when he catches it, or it'll end up in that result right there. He hit only one three in their first game against Arkansas, but he took seven. 
That's a green light for a freshman. That is a green light. You can see it look good when it comes off his hands. He could be certainly lethal for the Jayhawks if they don't keep an eye on him. Wilson just inside the arc. Gets it to go. You know, a lot of people make a lot of Brady Dick's debut. I was really impressed with Jalen Wilson's debut as he's making that jump uh, from being kind of a third score, kind of background guy from last year's team to being the marquee player for the Jayhawks. Wilson leads the break up top for Dick. Goaltending the call as Nelson got there, but just a touch too late. Pretty big effort here by Nelson to get up and challenge that on the rim. Just a little bit too late. Ball was either in the cylinder or on the glass. Two points for the Jayhawks. You mentioned today you think Grant Nelson has a chance to, to keep playing past college. He's really got a bright future. Yeah, I really do. You know, he's still young and uh, thinking about how versatile he is on the offensive end. He's got good length. He's a decent athlete. And we had an NBA scout in earlier this week, and he said that he was something, certainly someone that they were keeping an eye on for his, his high upside. Wilson, long outlet. Grady Dick attacking, spinning, shooting. Freshman, you, you get to see what's in their game more and more each day. Deflected pass. Harris has it. Dick in the corner. He'll fire. Now Adams. Kansas doing a lot of things right. Wayne just not putting the ball in the basket as much as they'd like. Yeah, just can't get it in. That's one of the limitations that KJ Adams has. Is as big of a physical presence as he is, he has difficulty finishing over length. And we saw that there with him trying to finish over Grant Nelson. Reaching foul on Harris sends us to our first break of the night. Kansas up six. Seeing that as it's turned out to help the Jayhawks get up by six points early. Four fast break points, in fact, for Kansas in less than five minutes to begin this ballgame. Bison have it here. They've had trouble getting shots consistently out of their half-court offense. Damari Wheeler Thomas is in number 10 in yellow. He did not play in their ballgame at Arkansas Monday. He's coming back from a leg injury. They're glad to have him back. Open three from the corner off target for Tajavis Miller just in off the bench. Yeah, good to see him back in the game. They did not expect to have him back on the court until January, but it's good to see that his rehab and recovery has got him on the court tonight. Oh, Pettiford in for KU found Adams. KJ didn't realize he was that open. Now Pettiford over to Wilson. Jalen Wilson feeling it early. Seven points. And I thought Bobby Pettifer was extremely productive and comfortable against Omaha early. And that's really what you want your backup point guard to bring to the game is comfort, stability. And there we got a chance to see him by him creating the play for Jalen Wilson. North Dakota State has not scored in nearly three minutes. McCuller a pull-up three. Up over the apparatus of Jalen Wilson Wayne. He can score it anywhere on the floor. He is right there. You see a shadow pick and roll there. Bobby did a great job early now that there's film on him of really attacking the paint against Omaha. I think he had eight points in the paint early, which now gets the defense's attention, which allows the roll man to be open as they try to guard the ball handler. Jayhawks make some changes, Wayne. MJ Rice, the freshman, the McDonald's All-American, making his career debut. He's guarding the basketball right now, number 11 in white. And so many people excited about the upside and athleticism of this young man. Been fighting a back injury the last several weeks. It's great to see him out there. The other guy that just came in was Ernest Uday, and he gets to the floor to force that tie-up. And this is really the type of energy that you want to see brought off the bench as you're subbing in your second unit. There's no fall-off in focus. There's no fall-off in intent and disruptiveness. And they were trying to see that here, um, forcing turnovers and getting deflections. In for the Bison. This is Luke Yoder, guarded by Pettiford. Two to shoot. He fires and hits. Yoder, a transfer from Division Three. Wesleyan hits a triple. And the reason why Yoder is able to, to, to transition and transfer up from a Division Three to mid-major Division One, and we get a chance to see the reason why right there is he knocks down that deep three. 
Joseph Yesifu in for KU. Inside the arc. It's the left side for Wilson. 10 to shoot. Jalen trying to find some space. 19 footer on the money. Jalen Wilson feeling it in this first half. Man, and Edgy Morgan got a great contest on that 16 point of the shot, but Wilson just feeling very comfortable. Maddox was able to finish that right up over the top of the big fella. Hostrider fouled. Ernest Uday draws the whistle. You were really impressed by Uday on Monday against Omaha. Yeah, I was. You know, his, uh, his ability to play above the rim, to set screens, to sprint out of ball screens, man, is a real skill. Look at him even now. He's able to guard that switch on that ball screen, something that KU's not notable for, switching four, switching five guys. Bedford splitting defenders, and there's the first point for MJ Rice. What a got, nice find by Pettiford. Got to feel great for MJ Rice. In the ice, getting the first point. Nice, easy point. Miller buries a triple at the other end. All the buys and points have come courtesy three three-pointers. Miller had six three-pointers in their exhibition game earlier this fall. He's the type of guy that if he gets going, he can keep the bike in the game. Speaking of getting going, Jalen Wilson ain't stopping. 11 in the first eight minutes tonight. Love that. Just showing his ability to be a three-level scorer. He's gotten to the basket. He showed his mid-range capability, and we all know that he can shoot the three. Really tough to defend if he can score at all three levels consistently. A little bit of a heat check for Miller. Ude clears. Pettiford up top. Rice, yeah! Up above the crowd, MJ Rice. There's the athleticism that we knew was there. Great connection point between those two. Ali Upla put on the money. MJ Rice with a strong finish. And getting after it at the defensive end as well. The freshman impressive in his first run as a Jayhawk. Getting up high. Rice, who's getting his first game action, he's been limited not being able to play because of a back injury, but we saw how athletic that freshman is by him with the follow, with the finishing the alley-oop at the rim. But he also went Zuby edge of four to set the screen lower to allow Bobby Pettiford to be able to create more. Steven. Thank you, Kenitra. Ude challenging at the rim, comes away with the rebound. Kansas off and running again. Rice in and out. McCullough. Gets him another look. Wayne, we saw Norm Roberts in that huddle. This is when the team's playing well. Looked like he was getting after, but that's just kind of how Norm Roberts is. Isn't it, it? it really is. That's just a regular Thursday evening uh, for <laughs> Norm Roberts. He's as energetic and animated as they come. Ude up top for the flush. You said it. That's what he can do. A lot of guys can't. Sounds simple, but set a good screen, roll to the rim, and jump high. There are not too many guys on the floor right now on either team that can go up and get that ball at the pinnacle the way Ernest did on that last play. Pettiford. Already four assists. McCullough from the elbow. Point of half number one. Kansas holding North Dakota State to three of 14 shooting. Whistle as Waddles gets into the lane. Well, Ernest Uday, freshman from Orlando. He's got some skills that you, as they say, can't teach. Yeah, did a great job of adjusting his angle on that screen, screening the lower third, forcing the defender to go up over the top. And as you're a big guy guarding Ernest, you got to make a decision. Do I guard the ball and stop dribble penetration, or do I stay with the roll guy? That chance was a win, was a lose-lose situation, because if you stay with the ball, you get that end result with the alley lob over the top. Waddles on the pull-up. Zach Clements in with a rebound for Kansas. Blocked from behind, Nelson up with the top for the rejection. Nelson showing that athleticism and length that's got him having some pro potential. He's been rather quiet on the offensive end, but is skilled enough to impact the game on the defensive end, and they're certainly going to need him to do both if they plan on getting back in the game. 
Allison's been active at the defensive end. No points yet, but four rebounds. Culler trying to get downhill. Stops, pops, and hit. First point for the ball game for Kevin McCuller, the senior transfer from Texas Tech. You know, it's kind of the game plan for the Bison is they want to shrink the paint and kind of force long jumpers, long contested twos and threes. Quick hands again for Kansas. Yes, a food. Off and running. Rice tips it home. Joseph Yetsky showing his speed and explosion is there. Didn't get a chance to finish that layup, even with the 44-inch vertical behind him. Harris will pick up Wheeler Thomas in the full court. Clemens to help off the ball screen. This is Morgan. He's been quiet. Going to work on Clemens. Lost the handle. Stays with NDSU. NDSU getting a, Morgan the ball right where they want him to get. They like him to catch it kind of in that high post just below the top of the key to go one on one. But Joseph Yesifu with the savvy dig there, knowing that Zach Clements had good length to contest the shot. Morgan would probably attempt to get to the basket and was able to break that ball away. The color of the rebound off the Wheeler Thomas, but she used the term dig. What is that for folks who are maybe wondering? Yeah, what's well, when, uh, you know, usually it's a post terminology when a post player catches the ball with his back to the basket or uh, when the guard is able to uh, leave his man and to disrupt and try to steal and, and bother the big man who's trying to handle the basketball. You know, big guys traditionally aren't used to being able to handle the basketball. All that's changing in this day and age of basketball, uh, but it's great to be able to see multiple efforts on the defensive end. It's everybody's job to go and to guard the ball, not just the man guarding the basketball. Good pass underneath, and the reverse layup goes for Bowden Scunberg, the junior out of Jamestown, North Dakota. His first points, the first made two-pointer of the game for the Bison. Yeah, and Scumberg really needs to get active. One of their better players was on the team in 2020 when the Bison came to the field house and really bothered the Jayhawks and he and Nelson have a remembrance of what that was like and are looking to tap into that to will their team. A little different Allen Fieldhouse tonight. It was cardboard cutouts in the stands when they were here two years ago. Cardboard cutout mask, man. I'm, I'm, I have no intention of going back to that. <laughs> Spaced out chairs on the benches. Like a ghost town. I'm thankful we had basketball during that era, but absolutely. I like fans and and the traditional outlook of things. Uh, juice in the building tonight. Yesifu, wing three, rattles home. Kansas rolling in this first half at both ends, really, and getting a lot of production from a lot of different sources offensively. Man, how nice is that to see multiple players get involved offensively? The Jayhawks sharing the basketball. We don't have guys hunting shots, hunting their own points. North Dakota State trying to hang in it. Bowden Scunberg off the find from Tajavis Miller. Season, great things happening all around. Kenny Logan, good player, great leader. Would you agree? And not satisfied, even though they're bowl eligible, so they have three games left in the season. Looking to extend that wing column. The great North Dakota State Bison fan base knows a little something about football, too. Man, they're a power. They got a collection of trophies up there. Grant Nelson with his first bucket tonight. Good execution on the set coming out of the timeout by David Richardson. Yeah, coming out of a, a timeout, you want to make sure you get your best player involved, even one who's been quiet offensively earlier in the night. Kansas tried to do that. Wilson got cut off, though, by Nelson on the drive. Brady Dick thought about a 30-footer for a moment. He'll take some 30-footers this year. Yes, Safu. He's got a pair of triples. Now you mentioned Brady Dick's shooting range. Even when he doesn't have the ball in the hands, even when he's not firing it up there, he's such a prolific scorer that he's shown early that you have to know where he is on the court at all times, which eventually can create other opportunities for other players. The active hands defensively for Kansas continue to cause problems for the Bison. And that's actually something that the Jayhawks chart. They actually chart deflections each game. 
You see the importance of active hands, the entirety of the defensive possession and how disruptive it can be, getting teams out of their rhythm and where and how they want to start the offense. Scumberg, tough shot. Shot clock was ticking down. Game rebounding by the Jayhawks. Five white shirts in the paint there. 32 to 13. Kansas 13 of 27. They've turned it over just once. Harris going to work. Rare one on one take for Dewan Harris. And a little magic from the junior point guard. Man, we've seen that before. I specifically remember a move like this to win us a game here in the field house against Iowa State last year. Man, when he gets down here with his right hand, the one handed scoop around the defender for the N1, very impressive. And as I'd mentioned earlier in the week, really believe the Jayhawks are going to need DeWan Harris to be more assertive in a scoring type role. As a lot of attention is going to be given to Brady Dick and Wilson. Seven different Jayhawks have scored in this first half. Scumberg looking for help. And the Morgan back to the bucket against Clements. Double team comes, kicks it out. Scumberg again. Trying to work on McCullough. Five on the clock. Scumberg, ball screen, and Clements. Got a little too much arm when he reached for the ball. Ooh, a late inadvertent foul. Under three seconds on the shot clock there. Did not need to reach in there and, and get a foul. Here, late in the shot clock here. You want to have wide hands to the tier of the drive and have them ready to point and contest the shot. No need to foul there. Great defense for 27 seconds. Still the foul. Shot clock reset to 20. Morgan this time against Adams. Where we saw the Bison attempt to isolate Adams. DeJuan Harris ready with the dig again. Harris ready to block it as the shot clock was expiring. This defense by the Jayhawks is smothering the visitors from Fargo. I know this possession ended with the result of a block by Harris, but man, I really like the way that just his mere presence kind of deterred Andrew Morgan from taking additional crab dribbles to get closer to the rim to try to score over KJ Adams, cause him to fan it away, and Juan made another great play in contesting the shot. Up top for Adams with the finish. That alley-oop availability was created by Juan getting that great paint touch earlier with the N1 scoop and score. That time, both defenders stayed with DeJuan Harris, and DeJuan Harris with eyes in the back of his head. Spider senses found KJ Adam up top to the lob. Did you just say Spidey senses? Spidey senses. <laughs> so you're a Marvel guy. I'm kind of a comic book geek. All right. right. Jalen Wilson back at don't forget about him. 14 in the first half for Jay Will. Bison try to answer. Three from the corner. Good for Scumberg. And it quiets the crowd a bit. Corner three has become such a high percentage shot on all levels of basketball. That was just coming into fashion when you got into the NBA. But what's always in fashion, alley-oops, any time, any place. K.J. Adams from Dewan Harris. Students from our RLCT program, deep appreciation and respect for all of our service members growing up, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Absolutely. Uh, around so many tremendous uh, leaders and people who sacrificed to serve this country. Thank you, thank you, thank you. North Dakota State ball here out of the timeout. They scored on the last possession they had coming out of the timeout. They go to Nelson here and double teamed in the lane, gives it up. Now Nelson will step out. Three pointer online, but short. Fifth rebound for Kevin McCuller in this first half. Dick going baseline. Wilson, 14 in the first half. Make it 17 for Jalen Wilson. Jalen Wilson having a 
heck of a game on the offensive end. Did a great job on the defensive possession before staying down on the dribble drive for Grant Nelson, a guy that likes to spin, a guy that likes to shot fake, and try to lift the defense to get the angle for an easy score or a foul. Jalen Wilson not biting on that. Again, a single-digit shot clock for the Bison. Waddles trying to create, forced to fire. McCullough got a piece of it. Wilson had it before the buzzer sounded. Pettiford, a lob. Ude, a jam! My goodness! Bobby Pettiford with his fifth assist for the game. I believe that's already a career high, and we have so much more game to play. When this guy comes in the game, he impacts it. I think even in Omaha, he had 13 points in 14 minutes. Uh, maybe he's accumulated maybe six minutes this half, already five assists. He's certainly an impact player coming off the bench. Bobby Pettiford played only 14 games a year ago, dealt with injuries. He's healthy right now, and he's showing he can play a little bit. Three ball goes for Waddles. He's got a pair of them. 45-19. Tyson already have about 18 three-pointers put up. I imagine they'll try to continue that. They're a volume three-point shooting team. Jalen Wilson hot in his first half. Six of eight, three of four from downtown. He's no longer capable. He is the point guard. <laughs> Bobby Pettiford proving himself to be a capable backup by what he's shown the last two games. When you get that the ring on your resume, you're no longer just capable. Things, things change a little bit when you get that. You're, you're the guy. Backdoor pass, too hot. Third turnover for KU. 89 seconds to go before halftime. It's been extremely helpful for the Hawks as well, limiting the turnovers, meaning they're getting shots on goal with high frequency, and they've been able to capitalize off that. Deep three, Wheeler Thomas. Wilson rips the rebound out of there. Today out of the screen, Wilson, quick cross. Contact, whistle, blocking foul. Good idea by Wheeler Thomas. Yeah, great attempt there. Just didn't quite get his feet set. A little bit on the side shuffle and falling to the side. Didn't quite convince the officials to give him the charge. Jordan Wilson showing the total package offensively tonight. On the inbound, an open baseline look. Wilson runs down the long rebound. Great second effort by Bobby Pettiford to keep that basketball alive. Grady gets right back to it. What a move. The freshman can score it. How about that? Here we get another look at this basket here. Grady Dick not settling for the long jump shot. Not afraid to get in the paint, mix it up a little bit. How about the little shimmy shake out behind the three-point arc? And then the up and under. Best up and under move that you've seen. Well, that one was pretty good right there, and I'm sure the Jayhawk fans are hoping to, to see more of it. You know, the dream shake had a nice little yeah. shoulder shake up and under back in the day. One of the best ever put on a Jayhawk uniform had a pretty good one too, uh, Danny Manning. Certainly one of the best ever. Wilson on Nelson. Spins middle, help comes. McCullough on the rotation, got the deflection, and they get the turnover. And there it is again. Jalen Wilson showing his ability to guard multiple positions. Staving off the 6'11", Grant Nelson, who's still trying to work things up offensively. Can't quite get past Jalen Wilson, dribbling from the wing, and Jalen doing a great job staying down on those pump fakes and pivots. Kansas can essentially hold for the final shot of the half if they want. I think a Bill Self coach team would much rather finish the half with a defensive stop like that. Maybe I spoke too soon. Certainly not a turnover. They'll get another opportunity well, to get a defensive stop. I'm going to guess Bobby Pettiford decided I don't want to shoot this with so much time on the clock. I'll pass it, but Jalen wasn't looking. 
Ball knocked loose. Waddles deep, deep three in and out. And we are at halftime. What a first half for the Kansas Jayhawks. 48 to 19. They shoot 56%. Important to note, man. I really love seeing their unselfish play, even with opportunities for guys to be able to score easily. Again, guys not hunting their shot, guys not thinking selfishly, guys making the extra pass to give up a good shot to get a great shot. That's some well-rounded basketball being played. Dozen assists for Kansas in the first half. Four turnovers. Second half starters for KU. Same as began the game. Bison open the same as well. Grady Dick gets baseline. There's that extra pass you were talking about. Harris unable to cash the three, though, but an outstanding look. They went from good to better to best. Yeah, it was great, man. Those uh, passes and attacking the basket. Moving the basketball, got them the shot they wanted, just were unable to convert on that possession. Morgan, a little trouble making the catch. He goes to the floor, so does Adams, so does Harris, down to a knee, tie up, possession Bison. And I wonder how much this road trip is kind of wearing on the Bison. I know when you play the type of opponents here going after Arkansas and Kansas, both top 10 opponents you can get excited but man they've been on the road six days maybe feel a little bit out of rhythm out of sorts haven't been in their own bed haven't had their own traditional meals they left town last weekend play at arkansas monday you come straight to lawrence not a, a, it's a fairly easy drive fayetteville to lawrence but like you said just a lot of time away from home in a hotel Still trying to do class while you're on the road. There's still some uncertainty on whether or not they may make it back tonight. as some inclement weather. As will happen when it gets around this time of the year for the next few months in the great city of Fargo. Flights out of the Fargo airport getting canceled today. Let's see if they're able to get home. Safe travels, the number one priority, obviously. Nelson one for two, that trip to the line, just his third point tonight. Wilson, last not friendly, second chance goes. Big night continues for Jalen Wilson. He's only four behind his career high, Wayne. Tracking in on that career high. Man, just being really assertive. Haven't forced the issue at all. Jayhawks fighting over the rebound there. Grady Dick has to pull it out. Short on that one. Morgan running the floor, lays it in. Dexterity from the big fella, Andrew Morgan. Something we haven't seen all night from the Bison. Getting an easy basket in transition. That could be something that could help them turn this around. They can continue that type of outcome on the defensive end. Color, baseline. Will bring it himself. He stays at that end. Keep in mind, Grant Nelson's only a junior as well. He's really in that transition phase. Also, like Jalen Wilson, where he's played behind some guys that have had to carry the offensive scoring and leadership load, and now as a junior, is having to adjust with. Being the focal point of defenses trying to stop him. That's certainly the case tonight for the Jayhawks. He was the Summit League sixth man of the year two years ago. Last season, 11.6 points per game. They're looking for him to score 15 points a game, maybe more this year. Yeah, and he had 17 against Arkansas, but Jalen Wilson doing a phenomenal job of taking oh. on the defense in that time. McCullough all alone assists Grady Dick. You mentioned the 17 for Grant Nelson the other night. That came in just 19 minutes as well. Yeah, pretty efficient as he labored with some foul trouble as well. Dick tried to jump the passing lane. Open three, Miller, and it goes. Second three ball tonight for Tejavis Miller. He's from Big 12 country from down in Lubbock, Texas. Wilson baseline hanging. Has it picked off on the pass. Scumberg runs. Miller in the corner. Extra pass. Yoder, three. And right
right there to clean it up. Grant Nelson. Good steal for the game, getting to the backside to clean up. Yeah, the Jayhawks were able to get away with that baseline drive and pass it to the slot a little bit earlier. Traditionally, they like that pass to go to the baseline. The Bison sniffed that out and again found another transition basket, which they're hoping to get more of. Tough shot by McCuller as he got into the lane. Bison putting a little something together here. Yoder, nice cross. Quick hands, though, from Harris. McCuller, two on one. Dick, the trailer. Slams it home. Great for awareness by Kevin McCuller to drop that pass off. Brady Dick showing his athleticism. Yet again, big dunk against Omaha. Added to his highlight reel. Another steal. Harris. What a pass. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Transition offense picking back up for the Jayhawks. Nelson needs help. Needs it quickly. He'll take a timeout. Jayhawk crowd loving what Grady Dick and the home team are showing them tonight. Hey, you're getting out and running here in the second half. Aaron Miles. Uh, Aaron got rid of the headband eventually, didn't he? Uh, not, not, not before he left here. Okay. Aaron Miles now on the bench of the Boston Celtics. Not to mention another big NBA coaching hire for the Jayhawks, Jock Vaughn. Yes. Taking the helm for the Brooklyn Nets. A multi-year contract to lead the Brooklyn Nets and Kevin Durant. Delon Harris doing it all at the defense man. MJ Rice is in. MJ Rice called for an offensive foul. Harris had a block in the first half. Delon gets another one here in the second half. Timeout at Morin. Still a 29-point lead for the Jayhawks, as it was at halftime. North Dakota State had a little burst to begin the second half, but Kansas has answered. Full court pressure now from the Jayhawks. Handled by the Bison. They get it across, and MJ Rice, a half-step late in arriving, picks up an unnecessary foul. Yeah, Freshman moved there. Looked like he was going to be there at the right of time, but he knew it. Right now that pass with the wrong hand. Lost him into... North Dakota State's player picking up the, the easy foul. If he was denied that with the other hand, I think the outcome would have been layup on the other end. Tip slam, Joshua Streit. His first points of the season. Sophomore from Watkins, Minnesota. Harris. Adams juggling catch. Strider runs that one down. We talk about the size of the Bison, Nelson, Morgan, but they've got size on the bench. They have depth in terms of big guys. Scunberg, nice turnaround in the lane. Coming off career high 17 Monday at Arkansas. First two games this year, the Bison have played in front of 35,000 fans combined. Maybe a few more than they'll play in front of back home, especially with football season still going on. They draw some good crowds throughout the year, though. Home in the Shields Center. On the road in the Summit League, longtime rivals for a lot of those schools. Taylor Wilson, what a finish in the air around the world and in. Great job by Dewan Harris keeping that dribble alive, even under the basket in a non-scoring area. All eyes on the basketball, which... Led to that back cut by Jalen Wilson. And man, this is a pretty athletic catch and finish that Jay Will has here on the full speed cut. Catches it in the air and dipsy doos from left to right for the reverse layup. Harris just finding some space for the delivery. Harris will take a seat. Four assists tonight for Dewan. Matched his career high with eight on Monday. Bobby Pettiford, who had oh five assists in the first half, back in for Kansas. And tipped out. 
play by Damari Wheeler Thomas to keep that alive. With the dribble on the ground. He recovers after it was poked free. Jakari White. Three behind the screen. Short. Long rebound. Goes into the Bison Bay. Good contest on the shot there. Jakari White, the Juco transfer. Has the ability to score, has some firepower in his arsenal. Average 16 points a game in his junior college campaign. Two days in for Kansas, he sets the screen, he gets rewarded. Another monster flush for the freshman. Man, so much space out there. You've got Kevin McCuller in the right corner, Grady Dick in the left corner. Defense having to stay true, not wanting to leave those guys and leave so much room for Bobby Pettifer and Ernest Uday to operate in the middle. Pettifer almost did a double take that the guy who can jump out of the buildings running all alone down the middle of the lane. I guess they'll throw it up to him. He was probably surprised he was that open. They made it look pretty easy for sure. How about this lineup right now for the Jayhawks, Wayne? Three freshmen, Yesifu, second year in the program, and McCuller, first year in the program. Well, it feels like the game is out of reach, but these are valuable, valuable minutes for these young guys. Especially with the challenge that's awaiting the Jayhawks Tuesday night against Duke and the gauntlet that is the Big 12. This is White. Had a bird there to cut him off. Screen and roll for the Bison. Scoop shot blocked McCuller. Tried to keep it in, but his foot hit the ground. CJ McCuller taking leadership responsibilities out here with all these young guys. Even though it's his first season as a Jayhawk, a lot of collegiate basketball experience under his belt. came before the shot from Nelson. Second on Kevin McCuller tonight. Kevin a little more difficulty there holding his ground against Grant Nelson's spin. We saw Jalen Wilson doing a phenomenal job containing that move. Now they get an offensive foul this time. Push off called by Nelson trying to shake free from McCuller. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a frustration there. When you've got your top score just laboring to get open, let alone get a shot. McCuller in a hurry, pulls up, hits. Kevin McCuller, six points. An interesting thing to keep an eye on here defensively, McCuller guarding a much taller player. And draws another offensive foul from Nelson. There's that savvy veteran defense there. And really just great attention to the scouting report and the film that they watched. You saw it as he got a chance to take a look at the Arkansas games. If he can't get his shoulders by you, he loves to spin. And Kevin McCullough was just waiting for it on that possession there. And assistant coaches love that as they invest hours and hours into a scouting report, making sure these guys are prepared to know the tendencies of the guys that they'll be guarding. Metaford with his first points of the night to go with his seven assists. Scouting report for this game, Wayne, put together by Kansas assistant Jeremy Case. Big day today for Jeremy Case as Scunberg knocks down the jumper, not just because he's got the scouting report on the Bison, but it's his birthday today. It's his birthday turning, if he's 38. One of the top up-and-coming assistant coaches in the country. It's his scout tonight. He handled some big-time scouts in that championship run for the Jayhawks. Another bucket for MJ Rice, eight points. Trying to go into Morgan. Knocked away by Uday. We get a break in the action. Bobby Pettiford, big night. Handed out the helpers with seven dimes. There's his first two points. He 
Petra. Yeah, North Dakota State only has four second chance points. That's because of the way that KU is rebounding. But the coaches are telling the Jayhawks that they have to do a better job of moving their feet and getting in position. They're gambling too much on defense. So the, the core here right now is to play smarter defense and not fouling because the Bison are already in the bonus, guys. Thanks, Kenitra. Jayhawks getting after it again defensively. Another deflection. Bison in the bonus a little early in this half, and that has been another way that they've been able to hurt teams in their successful pass, shooting in the upper 70s from the free throw line. Ude, no way for Nelson. Now Rice. Ude trying to make a highlight reel at both ends. Yoder on the push. Cut off by Pettiford. Waddles the trailing three off the heel. Yoder the board. Nelson not deterred. Now gives it up. Oh. Yes, the food to the floor. Has it. Pettiford. Ude, look out. Look at the big fella. Oh. On both ends of the court, all of the energy and the excitement started with his block shot several possessions ago and that energy just continued to stay at a high level until the big finish dunk was there. Morgan free in the lane, knocks it home and a technical foul has been called on Ernest Ude. That's a new rule this year. Rule. No more warnings for a flop if the official deems that you went down without contact and flop. They don't have to give you a warning anymore. It's a class B technical foul. That's what we get right here. And usually when there is a new rule emphasis, you oftentimes see it early in the season. We see it there. Yeah, my calendar says it's still November. That means it's early. They're still trying to work on that. Certainly not necessary by, by Ernest. I mean, he made several toughness plays right there with the original contest at the rim. and. A dunk attempt and then a, a dunk completion. Man, we don't need to flop and have a soft play like that. Kip Kissinger, Amy Bonner, Byron Jarrett, our officials tonight. About a soft play as Nelson put his head down, got in between two Jayhawks. Foul on Zach Clements. We'll see if we'll play like that. Ends Ernest Snyder or if we'll have another opportunity to bounce back from that. Two shots, Grant Nelson. One of the best players in a very underrated mid-major league, the Summit League. North Dakota State, South Dakota State, traditionally the two powerhouses on the basketball side. Oral Roberts may be back at the top this year, though. But unless you're in the Dakotas or down in Tulsa, you really don't know how good the Summit League is day in and day out. You're really not sure, and just with the makeup of the tournament, how oftentimes have you seen a team win a regular season title in the Summit League and then get upset? That is an outstanding conference tournament there at the Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. If you're looking for a fun weekend in early March, if something will surprise you, go to the Summit League Tournament, men's and women's. Off the charts, good. Still a little snow on the ground up there that time? Oh, there could be. Sioux Falls is balmy, though, especially by March. There's a triple that goes for Nelson. <laughs> Nelson trying to work himself into an offensive rhythm. Jay Rice has tried to get into a rhythm tonight. Clements steps out. Here in nine minutes to go. Nelson wants to go to work on Rice. Pettiford over to help. Nelson fouled on the jump hook. That's a guy who's six feet 11 inches, knowing he had a guy who's six feet five inches guarding him. Yeah, and he did a great job of using that crab dribble to get a little bit deeper into the paint. Try to get that jump hook up over the Kansas defense. Drew a foul. Now he's shooting three points. Collegiate debut tonight for MJ Rice, Wayne, and well, he's picked up four fouls in limited time on the floor. Rice has been credited with playing 14 minutes 
You like the aggressiveness, the eight points, the three rebounds, four fouls as well, though. Yeah, it's one of those learning curves that all freshmen go through playing without fouling. And, of course, it's the MJ's debut, his first game, and he's turned up and wanting to be aggressive. And Nelson tried to dunk on the entire state of Kansas, and Zach Clements managed to uh, deter it just enough. Brady Dix back in. And the officials stop play. Zach Clements in a little bit of pain. And uh, a little blood coming down the face of the Jayhawks sophomore. And here's why. Because when Grant Nelson went up, he went up and almost over the top of Zach. Who wasn't necessarily a malicious play, it's a basketball play. Grant Nelson didn't quite extend the arm nearly enough to draw the offensive foul. So Zuby edge of fours in for Kansas. His first appearance tonight. Wilson on the pull up. Couldn't get it to drop. He'll stay with the Jayhawks. Jalen Wilson tonight, Wayne, 21 points. It's his eighth career 20 point game. He had three of them last season. Too shy of his career high. And to me, I think Jay Will's been as equally impressive on the defensive end guarding Grant Nelson, which is probably why he got subbed back in, as we're going to see that matchup resurface as Grant Nelson's been able to get it going the last couple of possessions. Yeah, and edge of four, got his hands on a rebound and had it knocked away. Wilson nearly had a new career high there. Operates to the right side. He and Pettiford on the floor together here. Harris underneath didn't find anything. Uh, Wilson goes to work. Four shoot. Crossover. Pull up for Jalen. A little short. Nelson rebound. He'll bring it up himself. And that's the area where we'll really need to see the Jayhawks improve in as the season goes along, and they will. But the bulk and majority of their scoring takes place in transition. They'll need to grow in their ability to score in the half-court offense. Bison foul sends us to break. Jayhawks getting after it. Hustling. Yes, a flew to the floor. Oop. Man does not look 38 years old, does he? He was a little ahead of his time as a player. An elite three-point shooter. I bet oh. if you drop him in this game day and age with the high-volume three-point shooting that we see guys like Trey Young and Steph Curry, Four perimeter players, pretty much everybody in college basketball, oh, yeah, sometimes really five. But turned out to be a great coach. He will be a head coach one day. Mark my words. And come from a coaching family. His dad, Win Case, in his, I believe, his fifth season at Old Miss. And if it isn't enough to learn none of the two lids of Bill Self, man, he's got guys like Norm Roberts and Curtis Townsend and Joe Dooley. He's continuing to learn from every single day. His future is bright in the coaching industry. Harris a basket at one end, Dick a rebound off the air ball at the other end. Here's Wilson into the lane. Oh, Roberts wanted a foul call, nothing coming. Stunberg with a floater. Wilson pushing it. Harris, he'll find somebody. Edge of four, tough finish off the window. And a great, well-rounded possession there by Zuby Edgefer, keeping his feet moving on that dribble penetration earlier, and then sprinting the floor for an easy transition finish. Guy that reminds me a lot of Jamari Trailer. That's high praise. Miller with the bucket. What way does he remind you of Jamari Trailer? Talking about Edgefer. First of all, he's a great kid. Great story, energy, effort, athletic, willing to do whatever is necessary to contribute to the team. I think his game is just going to continue to grow and grow with reps. I'm excited to see the development of that young man. Stunberg over Wilson. Edge of further rebound. A little bit like Jamari Trailer, too, in the fact that he might play a little taller than his listed height. Six feet nine, but with his 
bounciness and his long arms seems to play more like 6'11". Yeah, he does, and great speed. And so the Jayhawks fans remember one of the best dunks that they've seen in recent history, Jamari Trailer in transition alley you live in Austin, Texas, where his head almost hit the rim. He had to duck just to dunk it. Zuby will shoot two free throws. Six foot nine, 240 pound freshman, Garland, Texas. Garland High School. Changes on both sides. Edgefer will get another crack at it. One point of separation between these teams here in the second half. The three Miller off target. Long right arm of Grady Dick to reel in the rebound. Grady showing he will play his part, not just on the offensive end, but on the defensive rebounding side as well. Kansas has hit just two of their last ten shots. Pettiford and Harris still out there together. This is Pettiford feeding Harris. Harris, baseline hesitation. Dick drives it. Couldn't finish. Jayhawks seemingly a little out of sorts to get that half-court offensive possession going as they spent most of the time well above the three-point line. Edger first sends Morgan to the line. Andrew Morgan's going to play some big minutes for North Dakota State this year in his sophomore season. Yeah, he's been pretty quiet tonight. Certainly going to need him moving forward in the second league. Yeah, there's actually a lot of synergy that these two schools have. Just here recently, yes, sir. David Cook, the former vice chancellor here at the University of Kansas, took the reins as president for the Bison. And Currently, the women's basketball head coach spent some time here in, in Kansas. Jory Collins. Great friend and longtime assistant of the reigning Big 12 Coach of the Year, Brandon Snyder. Pretty excited about their first win yesterday in a five star recruit signing, Samaya Nichols. Adams. Powerful, turns a trip to the line. We saw how much KJ Adams could be a menace on the offensive glass early in the week against Omaha. And, you know, I think that's really where his points are going to come from. He's not the type of guy that is a knockdown shooter that can create a shot for himself. But it's going to be those effort baskets like we saw created there. Big hands for Bobby Pettiford and Grady Dick as they check out of the ball game. Kyle Cuff Jr. in for the first time. Kansas 5 of 7 at the line tonight. That five of eight. Still so impressive with Bobby Pettiford in his two games. Took more on a scoring role earlier in the week, and this game finished up with eight assists. Or three rolls home. Lance Waddles, a trio of triples tonight for the freshman. Was originally from Bismarck, North Dakota, even though it says hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana. Back in the game, up top, pitch of four. Adams back door. Wow, the big to big, great pocket pass by Zuby Edgefor. Usually you see a guard making the pocket pass to a big on the back door cut, but the young fella showing some of his versatility. Morgan back to the bucket, works in and scores it. 
Andrew Moore could be a load, especially when you have to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. And if he's by himself, and get two or three crab dribbles deep into the paint. It's pretty much a bucket every time. Earlier in the game, we saw the Jayhawks coming off double teaming that. That's an unstoppable shot there by Joseph Yesifu. Fading from 18 feet. Morgan going to work again, scores again. It's interesting with that lineup. I thought Joseph Yesifu was going to dive in and try to help and dig on Morgan as Zuby was kind of left on an island, but Lance Waddles is a knockdown shooter and was probably instructed not to leave the shooter. Zuby gonna have to bow his neck on the defensive end because I'm sure they're gonna be coming back to Morgan before the night's over. Rice, on a finish. The Jayhawk debut of MJ Rice is a double figure night, 10 points. Yoder, not there, edging for the rebound. Get your head to cuff. Step through. Floater. Price there to grab the rebound. And he's fouled. Minute 48 to go in this one. Jayhawks keep adding to the highlight reel. KJ Adams for the slam. Two shots. MJ Rice. Freshman from. Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, thinking about the debuts of these three McDonald's All-Americans, about as good as you could have asked for. Not too shabby. Rice, 10 points tonight. Four rebounds, an assist. The Hawks have cleared the bench. Michael Jankovic, Dylan Wilhite into the ball game. North Dakota State, Ryan Sletton. This is Wheeler Thomas fouled. Will Height with the foul. Looking over at the NDSU bench, seeing a local kid, Desmond McKinney. Raytown product from Raytown South out with a knee injury. It would have been nice to see that young man healthy being able to come back and play close to home in front of his friends and family. Got to play here a couple years ago, but no fans then. A little different when the building's full. Hopefully he's back and ready to go when they hit Summit League play in about mid-December. UMKC or Kansas City in that conference. Hopefully have another chance to get back in front of his people. Jankovic, three. Yeah, Michael Jankovic. Michael Jankovic told me that I should refer to him as burner account. Really? And why is that? Well, it's kind of what we call his jump shot. Anytime it leaves his hands, we all think it's good. Hence the burner reference. Then also a little play on words towards Kevin Durant with his uh, social media activity that's become a little bit of legend. Michael Jankovic keeps knocking down threes when he gets in. He'll become something of a legend here in Lawrence as well. Curry White had the bucket a moment ago for North Dakota State. 30 seconds to go in this one. Three ball. Sam Hostreiter. How about this story? Sam Hostreiter is a freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. His twin brother, Jack is a freshman at North Dakota State's Summit League arch rival, South Dakota State. Should make for an interesting Thanksgiving dinner, huh? How about when they get together and those two teams play? <laughs> Twin Five. brothers on opposite sides of that rivalry. Final seconds ticking away. Kansas wins it 82-59. Norm Roberts and the Jayhawks 2-0. North Dakota State 0-2 against two top 10 opponents. Pretty thorough performance from the start tonight for the Jayhawks. Yeah, well-rounded performance.